Okay, Shalom Aleichem everybody, welcome to the Sicha, Sicha Beis of Parshas Shalach in Chelek Yud Gimel, page 44. Vipirushoy ala posik, v'ho anoshem asha shalach Moshe loser esa oretz, v'yashuvu v'yalinu all of his kola eido, l'hoitzi dibo ala oretz. The men that Moshe Rabbeinu sent to Eretz Yisrael, to uh, see Eretz Yisrael, they came back and they brought everyone to complain. Uh, the ones that uh, they gave the report in the land. And Rashi says as follows. When they came back from seeing the land, they brought the whole congregation to complain with the, bad, with the report that they gave. These men, they died. So Rashi, so the Mepharshim that is, clarified what exactly is Rashi coming to explain with this Pshari. So the, the Rashi is um, negating that we shouldn't touch the word Vayeshuvu as follows. That the Meraglim actually gave a second time a bad report, they bought, brought Yidin a second time to complain against Moshe Rabbeinu. The whole story repeated itself again. Elam, rather, Shepirushu, Shepirushu, who the Pshara of Vayeshuvu is, U Kishashavu, Mitur Ha'aretz, Her Imu, all of us, Kaleid, by Tziyaz Diba. When they came back, then they brought everybody to complain. Which means, Shema Shekosu Vayeshuvu, when it says here Vayeshuvu, so the word Vayeshuvu does not mean that they return to do this, this again. Rather, what it means is, Kishashavu mitura Aretz. When they returned from Eretz Yisrael. And V'chol HaPasik U'chazore Al-Mashkosu Kvar. This Pasik is repeating the story that we already know from before that happened. B'tura Gdame, over here the Torah is repeating it as an introduction, L'Mashkosu V'achakach, to what it says afterwards, V'yemusu V'goymer, that these men died. These men that came back and brought all Yidin to complain against Moshe, they died. That's the simple pshat. So you may have thought that maybe the Meraglim again gathered Yidin and brought them to complain a second time. And that's what the Torah is telling us here. And the Rebbe actually in the Ha'ar is Mitzayin to the Cheskuni that actually learns this way. That they gathered Yidin again and the Yidin came to complain a second time. So therefore, and that would be the Taich of Vayeshuvu that they repeated it a second time. So Rashi clarifies, no, Vayeshuvu means when they returned. When, when they returned from Eretz Yisrael, they brought Yidin to complain. It didn't happen again. What brings Rashi to say that this is the Pshara the Pasuk? If the main point of this Pasuk is to say that the Miraglim actually brought Yidin to complain a second time, so the Pasuk should have began presenting the story this way. And it should have said, And the men again came and returned again and repeated the Aveda again, and and they brought the Yidin to complain. The Kiv in Damascus, but since the pasuk begins, Veho Anoshim Asha Shalach Moshe Goyim, those men that Moshe Rabbeinu sent, then then it says Vayeshuvu Vayalinu, Mashma Sheikir Chidush Akasavu Binegaya Leho Anoshim. So from this it seems clear that the Torah wants to tell us another detail about these men. What happened to these men? V'loi Bishara and Yonim Sheba Pasik Zeh, and not the other things that it says afterwards in the Pasik, Vayeshuvu Vayalinu. That's not the main story here that this repeated again. And therefore Rashi says, that now there's a new thing that the Torah is telling us. What happened to these men? And then, as a parenthesis, the Torah reminds us and tells us who these men were, what it is that they did. But if you hear the main thing the Torah is coming to tell us, that these men, sent to see the land, what happened to them? That they died. So the Torah here is basically coming to tell us the Einish of, of Misa that occurred to these uh, Meraglim that, that gave the bad report and brought Yidin to complain against Meisha. This is the simple Pshad and Rashi. However, the Rebbe says, now we have the following questions here. Aleph, kol kan kvar yedua Everything that the Torah here says, true, Rashi says it's all like in the parentheses, but we know all of this. So why is the Torah repeating it again? 
ואם נפרש עכשיו פעם שנייה ואימו, הרי זה חידש פוסק זה. If we're going to say, like the Cheskuni, that in fact they did cause the Eden to complain a second time, so this is a new part of the story that the Taita is telling us here. The Pasig is just repeating what these men did, that it already told us the whole story. It's entirely extra even to put it in as a parenthesis that these are the men that did so and so. We know what they did. We know exactly what their Aveda was. And even just as an introduction to what the Taita here really means to say, that the Taita is telling us again the sin they did, which is the, the, the cause for the punishment of death, and it calls them Muvam HaKaidim. It's simple and clear from before that we see, we know who these men are, we know who the Miraglam are, we know what they did, and if the Taita tells us their punishment, we wouldn't be wondering why they got this punishment. Bayes, the other question here is, L'fizeh, Havale L'rashi L'hatik, Rak Tevis V'yeshuvu. The only thing that Rashi is coming to clarify is the pshat of the word Vayeshuvu. Don't think Vayeshuvu means that they repeated this a second time, but rather Rashi is clarifying. The word Vayeshuvu means Ulefarish Ukeshashavu Mituraretz. When they returned from the touring of the land, from seeing the land, Vayeser. There's nothing else that Rashi has to explain. Very short and concise Vayeshuvu Ukeshashavu. When they returned Mituraretz. Gimel, another question is My Kamashmal and Rashi. When Rashi adds and says, These words that Rashi says here, it doesn't seem to add anything and clarify anything in the Pshat of the Pasuk. That's what it clearly says in the Pasuk. Seemingly, Rashi is only clarifying Diva Yeshuvu. So then why does Rashi say the whole other line that he says? Dalit, another question is, Ma Moisif Rashi Bisiyumai? What is Rashi adding in his conclusion? Oisamanoshim, those men, Vayamusa, they're the ones that died. What would I think? Who else? You can't say that Rashi is Bavarni, Rashi is negating. You may have thought that when it says here it refers to the entire congregation, that all Yidin passed away. It clearly says in the Pasuk, that only the men that spoke negatively about Eretz Yisrael, which is the Miraglim, they are the ones that died. So it says that clearly in the next Pasuk. It's also a big squeeze to say Since you have over here this parenthesis where it reminds us who these men were that they sinned and they brought the bad report and they caused Eden to complain so therefore Rashi is sort of connecting back to what he said before and he's reminding us who we were talking about we're talking about those men and Rashi explains that all of this Reminding us who these men are and what they did is all just an introduction to the main point, which is to tell us the punishment that they got. So the Rebbe says this is a big squeeze. According to what Rashi says, that when it says in the Pasuk, then that they, they were the ones that caused Eden to complain, calls them move on. It's self understood that we're talking about the same men. It's not necessary for Rashi to write this explicitly. So basically, the Rebbe says, looking over here into this Rashi, we understand what Rashi is coming to answer in the Pasuk, to clarify the Pshat of what the Yeshuvu means, but the whole Arichis in the Rashi seems to be extra. What's this whole Drasha that Rashi is telling us over here? But we're not even done yet. Rashi continues going. The Rebbe continues, Achakach Mamshech Rashi Baisa Dibor. Rashi continues in the same Dibor as a flow, not in a separate uh, Dibor Amaschal. In the same Dibor, Rashi says, Call Hitzoas Dibo. Anytime you have in the Torah the expression of Hitzoas Dibo, speaking uh, or a report that's you using this term of Dibo, Lashen Chinuch Devarim. It means Chinuch Devarim when a person is training his words. Shemal Kichim Lashaynam La Adam La Dabre Bait. When a person is training his words and expressing his words to speak with them. To cause those that are, are slumbering to, to speak. So over there, David means to, to bring them to express, to speak. That's the idea of Diba, to express, to speak. But sometimes Diba can be used in the positive or it can be in the negative. It's not Diba itself is not necessarily a negative word. And with this, Rashi argues with other Rishayim that say that the word Diba is always negative. But Rashi says no, it could be negative, it could be positive. 
So therefore, in the next pasuk, it says, There it clearly spells out that they gave the report and it was a negative, it was a bad report on the land. Because there is a report that could be for the positive. So, the Rebbe clarifies first the pshat in this section of the Rashi. The Pashtos, Kosha Rashi, so the simple thing that Rashi is coming to clarify, Mashakosov Achakach, what it says in the next Pasik, Maitsiye Diba Sa'aretz Ra. Vir, it adds the word Ra, that it was a negative report. The Kan Kosov, Lohitsi Dibo Al Ha'aretz, that they expressed, they spoke, and they gave over the report on the land. Bliyas Ofis Ra. It doesn't add the word negative, Ra. So, Vazemetaretz, so Rashi adds, She Dibo. Call Dibur b'mashma. When the Torah says the word Dibur, Dibur, it could mean any kind of report. V'yashna l'toiva, v'yashna l'ra. It could be for the positive or for the negative. L'kach nema, mitziye Dibis, aretz ra. So therefore, in the next passage, it clarifies that these men gave a bad report. Sh'yash Dibur, sh'y l'toiva. Because otherwise, I would think it was positive, because Dibur itself could be positive. Avla pizayin, and move on. But we have over here three questions on this. Aleph, first of all, Makim Pirish Zeh, Hayitzarach Liyaz, Bepasaka Ba. Where's the place for this question? If that's the problem that Rashi has, that over here it just says Diba, and the next Pasik it changes and it adds Diba Ra, so Rashi, that's where Rashi should be uh, talking about this. Kisham Misayredes Akushi, it's there in the next Pasik where this question comes up. Lama Maisif Ra, why there did the Torah find it necessary to add the word Ra? Even if you'll argue and say that for whatever reason the Pshat of Rashi belongs right over here. The first time the Taita says the word Diba, doesn't seem to be that there's any connection between the interpretation of this particular word Diba and what Rashi was speaking about in the beginning of his Pirish here, where Rashi was explaining Vayashuva Vayalinu Olav. It's two different sections of the Pasik. Vimkain, Hayatsarik Rashi Lahatik, Hayatsarik Rashi Lafarsha Bidibri Bifnayatsmai. Rashi should have explained this meaning, the meaning of the word Diba in a separate Rashi. Lahatik Tevas Diba. Rashi would bring, as usual, another word, another Dibra Maskal, the word Diba, Ulafarsha, Kolaitsaz Diba Khulu. That uh, the shot of what Diba means? How is this a flow? How is it connected in this Rashi where Rashi was discussing the Yeshua Vayelinu Olaf? Gimel, the third question here is Loma Koifel Rashi, Oida Pam Besim Pirushoi. Why does Rashi repeat himself again at the end? Shiyash Diba Shila Toiva. That sometimes Diba, the term Diba, could be positive. Harek Farkosa Vayashnu La Toiva Vayashnu La Ra. Rashi starts off his. Uh, Pirish by saying that Dibba could be positive or negative. So why does it repeat it a second time at the conclusion of this Rashi? Okay, so the Rebbe will explain over here beautifully the Pshat of this Rashi and beautifully the flow from the first section of the Rashi to the second section of the Rashi, how it all goes in together. Habir because so the Pshat over here is as follows. In addition to what we have already mentioned from the Mepharshim, that the Rashi's intention here is to negate that we shouldn't interpret these two words to mean that the, that the Meraglim brought Yidin to complain a second time. Primarily, the question that Rashi is coming to answer is the question, the above-mentioned question, which is Kol HaKosov Miyuter Ki Eim Boi Chiddush. This entire Pasuk seems to be extra. There's no Chiddush in this Pasuk. Everything that it says over here, it's sort of coming to identify these men and what exactly these men did. All of that is known. The next Pasuk where it says the punishment that they died, that's the Chiddush that, uh, that the Torah is telling us here, the Einish that they got. But this entire Pasuk to identify the Miraglim and what they did, that seems to be entirely extra. That's the real question that Rashi is coming to answer. V'oid, besides that, Balatar, it's Kushin, Isafis, V'Pasuk Dilon. There's an additional question that Rashi is answering in this Pasuk. In the words of the Eibishter, to Moshe Rabbeinu in this week's Parsha, it emphasizes that this that the Meraglim complained to the Eibishter, they brought the Yidin to complain, was all against the Eibishter. As it clearly says earlier, which refers to the Meraglim, until when will this terrible congregation be Ashehema Malinam Olai, that they are complaining against me. That's what the Eibishter says to Moshe Rabbeinu. 
The Chaim B'Furish Ben Egeil L'Shah Ben Yisrael, so too it says regarding the rest of Yidin. Im Gaimer L'Chola Eda Ra Zayis Hanei Adam Alai. All of the Yidin that came and gathered against me, that it was against the Eibushter. They complained against the Eibushter. Well, the Pasuk says suddenly, after the whole story of the Miraglim is over, the Torah is telling us something different. All of Gaimer that they came and they complained on Moshe, on Moshe Rabbeinu, that they were fighting and complaining against Moshe. That's not what it says before in the story of the Miraglim. They came back from Eretz Yisrael. The Abishra promised them to go into Eretz Yisrael. The Abishra wanted them to go into Eretz Yisrael. And they came and they were complaining. What is the Abishra doing to us? We're going to go into Eretz Yisrael and it's going to be terrible. Their, their complaint was all against the Abishra. Why suddenly, after the story, it comes and tells us a new, a new detail here that they complained against Moshe? Now, the Rebbe clarifies, Now, the fact is that we see already before that they did complain against Moshe. Kamoshe Kosov, as it says in the Pasuk, while Moshe Val Aaron Kobne Israel Gaimer, that the Eden complained against Moshe and Aaron. So the Taita already does tell us this detail before. So it seems like they complained against the Abishter, and they also complained against Moshe. Both are true. So the Rebbe says, no. Harei, Aleph number one, Gam Aram Bachlal, Ubishova Lachayra Le Moshe, the Khan Maske Rakis Moshe. There, they, it says that they complained against Moshe and Aaron together, which seems to be equal. And here, suddenly, we discover another nuance that the Taita is telling us that they complained specifically against Moshe. That's specifically something against Moshe. And that's something we never saw before. Beis, the main point here is. It's not that they had, when you learn the story before, it's not two separate things. They complained against the Ebishter, and they also complained against Moshe. Rather, the Pshat is as follows. Poshit, it's obvious. She'oven atluna ala Kaddish Baruch Hu, chomer yeser ma'atluna al Moshe. The, the complaint against Moshe Rabbeinu is much more stringent, is much more severe, that is, than, again, the complaint against the Ebishter is much more severe than complaining against Moshe. Right? So even if it's true that they complained against the Abishter and they also complained against Moshe, as it says before, but which one stands out more? What's the primary Aveda that they did? The fact that they complained against the Abishter. Umadua Mat So why we hear that the Torah emphasized Shehilinu as Kol Ha'eda all of Al Moshe that they went and they complained at Moshe Rabbeinu. Why does the Torah say that? Okay, so the question over here is that Rashi, I mean, is really coming to answer more than one question. All right, so this is pretty unusual. Like the Derech Klal, Rashi uh, comes to answer one particular question, but here the Rebbe is saying that this Rashi is really coming to answer three different questions. Number one, he's clarifying the Pshat of Yeshuvu. Number two, Rashi is coming to explain the whole Pasik is extra. The entire Pasik seems to be extra. And number three, there, there is a new detail that it says here that seems to be different than what we learned before. So why is the Torah saying this? So since Rashi is coming to answer also this new question we just explained it. So therefore Rashi is not just clarifying the word Vayeshuvu, that Vayeshuvu means they returned from Eretz Yisrael. And Vayeshuvu does not mean that they returned and did that and they caused Yidin to complain a second time, but Rashi is coming to explain the whole Indian. Vayeshuvu, Vayalinu, Olof. That they complained against Moshe. What's this new detail here? Another point why Rashi brings the words Vayalinu Olof, not only because of his question, but Nekudas HaTeretz Bepirish Rashi Bekavonas Kol of the point of Rashi's answer. And what this Pasuk is really adding, what's this Pasuk Bechlal doing here? Muvueres Aidea Tevis Vayalinu Olof will be understood by, by looking and focusing on these two words Vayalinu Olof. Kidle Kaman, as we will explain. So Rashi is bringing these words from the Pasik. It's these words, Vayeshuvu, Vayalinu Olav, that are the key words to understanding what the entire Pasik is doing here. What's the Pshat? So the Pshat here is as follows. The way Rashi is explaining this to us, this Pasik is coming to answer a simple question. Earlier in the Psukim it says, that the Abisha got angry at the Yidin. The Abisha says, I'm going to wipe out Klal Yisrael. I'll be a plague. They'll all die. 
Yet what happens? And he brings about the Ebesh's forgiveness that the Ebesh forgave Yidin. And they did not die immediately. Over the span of the 40 years. None of them died below the age of 60. So Moshe Rabbeinu davened for Yidin. And he postponed the, the punishment to the age of 60. Okay, so if so, the question here is, So why was Moshe Rabbeinu's fila not effective that the Meraglim should not immediately die on that very day? If Moshe Rabbeinu davened for Klal Yisrael, so then Lechayre, he davened also for the Meraglim. So why wasn't Moshe Rabbeinu's fila effective to, for the Meraglim as well that they shouldn't immediately die? Okay, the Muchach, now the Rebbe adds that uh, the fact that the Miraglim did die immediately is clear, I mean, from what it says afterwards, and they got up in the morning the next day. In the Pashat of the Pasik, call Hakosov Kaidim Lazer, everything that it says before, that they got up the next day, including this that it says that the Miraglim died, it happened immediately on that very day when they brought the bad report. So the question is, why was Moshe Rabbeinu's filler not effective to save the Meraglim from at least dying that day, at least postponing this uh, punishment for the Meraglim? So the Rebbe in the Ha'ara points out that this is in Pshutish Mikra. If you look in Al Pi Aloche, there's a later date that's given for the date that the uh, Meraglim actually died, whether it's Yud Zainel or Zainel. But over here, the Rebbe says in the Pshar of the Pasik, it's clear that they passed away on that very day. So that's the question. Why was Moshe Rabbeinu's filler not effective for them? So therefore, this is where this Pasek comes in. The Pasek has to add, as an introduction for the next Pasek, where it says that they died, that these men that Moshe Rabbeinu sent, all of his colleagues, that these individuals brought the Eden to complain specifically against Moshe. They actually intended to fight with Moshe Rabbeinu himself. Besides the fact that they were upset at the Abishter and they weren't understanding what's going on here, why does Abishter want us to go to Eretz Yisrael, they had a kavana to, to argue and try, and with Moshe Rabbeinu. Therefore, this is the introduction that explains the next pasuk why they died immediately. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu's tefillah did not help for them. And as the rule that Rashi already told us earlier, the one that's the prosecutor could not become the source of the defense. If, if they were, were, were mounting a rebellion against Moshe Rabbeinu himself, and they were fighting against Moshe Rabbeinu himself, so that neutralizes the power of Moshe Rabbeinu Lagabe them, because they are fighting as Kayach that he has. The Gam, and another thing, Donin la Adam Mida Keneged Mida. A person is punished and judged, Mida Keneged Mida, measure for measure, because they wanted to rebel and fight against Moshe Rabbeinu. So the punishment that they got was that Moshe Rabbeinu's Kayach Hatfilo was taken ineffective for them. So this is the introduction and the Hasber why Moshe Rabbeinu's tefillah did not work for them. And this is what Rashi comes over here and says that, that this is what Rashi is explaining that is. That the Pshar and the Pasuk Vayeshuvu Vayalinu Alav that they came and they brought Yidin to complain against Moshe. So now let's read the words of Rashi again. Hirimu Alav They were complaining against him. As They brought all the Yidin to complain against Moshe. These men, they died immediately. Hainu meaning, shakal akos of bala hagid. The entire Pasuk is coming to, as an introduction to make one point. Shirakwa noshim ha elu hir imu alav. It's only these people that they were focusing on fighting against Moshe Rabbeinu. Lachain, heim shemesu take from Yad. They are the ones that died immediately. Ki avuram la heilat tfilas Moshe. For them, Moshe Rabbeinu's filler can't work, as the Rebbe explained. So when Ashi says, oisim anoshim, that is the punchline of the Rashi. The Pasuk over here is coming to say that it's Dafke, these men that were orchestrating a fight against Moshe Rabbeinu himself, for them, they neutralized the Tfilah of Moshe. It couldn't, the power of Tfilah's Moshe did not work for them. 
Now, although the Yidin also complained against Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe called Bnei Yisrael, that all the Yidin also complained against Moshe as the Rebbe brought before already this Pasik. But there's a big difference. They, their intention was not that they were looking for a fight with Moshe Rabbeinu himself. The Yidin were concerned. The Yidin heard this report from Eretz Yisrael that it's a danger to enter. So therefore they were afraid that they're going to, Moshe Rabbeinu is bringing them to fall on the sword and they're going to die. They were partially afraid for their life, but they didn't have any objective to fight against Moshe Rabbeinu. The Pasuk here is telling us that they orchestrated a complaint and fight against Moshe Rabbeinu, and therefore the Tvil of Moshe Rabbeinu did not work for them. This explains the first part of the Rashi, what Rashi is really clarifying here in the Pasuk. Now that Rebbe brings us in to the... Um, Next part of the Rashi. Actually, the Rebbe is first going to explain the two psukim, what the two psukim here are saying, and then we're going to come to the next part of the Rashi. Al pianal yuvam betuv tam hemshuch bezak suv based on what it says over here, how the Rebbe explained this, we can understand beautifully the flow of the two psukim over here, the first pasuk where it identifies who these men were and what they did, and the second pasuk where it says the punishment that they got. And the gam, and it also will explain, the pasuk there mentions yet again their Aveda, that they gave a negative report on the land. Although in the first Pasuk it already says what they did, that they gave a report on the land which was negative. So why does it repeat it again a second time? So the answer is, it's two different it's parts here. There's an introduction, as the Rebbe will explain. The Pasuk in the first Pasuk here, The Teire is not actually telling you the cause for the death, why they got this punishment. That's not what this Pasuk is telling you. Ki'en, it's coming to give you an introduction to explain something else. Lama loy ha'ilot tefillas Moshe. Why Moshe Rabbeinu was ineffective, Moshe Rabbeinu's tefillah that is, was ineffective for them. Masha kosev lo ha'itzi diba la'aretz, in the first Pasuk, when it says that they were the ones that complained, or they were the ones that gave the report on the land, ha'rezeo rak sipur ha'metzias, it's just telling you the facts of who we're speaking about. Eich vayalinu al yidei sh'aitziu diba la'aretz, how do they orchestrate this fight against Moshe Rabbeinu, how do they do it? By giving this report on the land and rallying the crowd against Moshe Rabbeinu. That's the first Pasuk. But then the Pasuk Hasheni, in the next Pasuk, There it's telling you what actually happened, the punishment that they got, that they died. So here the Pasuk is saying, Here the Pasuk is telling me, what was the cause for their death? What was the reason they deserved this punishment? That they gave a bad report. and Here the Pasuk is saying, That they opposed the Eibishter. The Eibishter had a plan to bring Eden into Eretz Yisrael, and they destroyed that plan, at least at this time. They, they gave a bad report. As we already said, and this remains true, the opposition to the Eibishter's plan is definitely more severe than the fight that they mounted against Moshe Rabbeinu. And therefore, Dafke for this, they deserve death. However, the Rebbe adds, it's only because of their opposition to Moshe, that neutralized Moshe Rabbeinu's ability to daven for them. So the two psukim are talking about two different things. The first pasuk is explaining in the flow of from what happened before, that we see that Moshe Rabbeinu davened for all of Klal Yisrael, and it was effective. Why over here was it not effective? So the Titus says, these people, they were fighting against Moshe. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu's tefillah does not work for them. And then in the next pasuk, it, go, it carries on to say what actually happened, that they deserved the punishment for giving the bad report, the opposition against the Eibishter, and that brings the punishment that they died. And therefore, it says again in the second pasuk, the bad report that they gave, which is what they did against the Eibishter. In the first pasuk, it's focusing on how they rallied the crowd against Moshe. In the second pasuk, it's talking about what they did against the Eibishter. But now the question over here is as follows, and here the Rebbe will bring us into the second part of the Rashi. If this entire Pasuk here is only here to tell me that these men complained against Moshe, as we explained why the Tate is saying this, in this Pasuk it's not explaining the cause why they deserve this punishment. 
If so, it would make more sense. The Pasuk should not at all mention the Aveda that they died for it. It's as if the Pasuk here is emphasizing and telling us the reason for their death. Shabbat take of la'achrizeh, which is going to be explained later in the next pasuk. It's heipach kavanas hakosov, and it's not what the, this pasuk is coming to say. In this pasuk, it's coming to say just the point that they rally the crowd against Moshe Rabbeinu. But the cause of the death is not the point that this pasuk is going to say. In the next pasuk, it's going to say that the cause of the death. So why does it add mitzia diba in this pasuk if it seems to take away, if it seems to uh, that go off of the point of what the pasuk is trying to say? The Rebbe adds, Although the Pasuk is telling you the facts. How did they rally the crowd against Moshe? Even this itself, that they rallied the crowd against Moshe, was also how? Through the report that they gave on the land. It's the Derech and the Teireh that sometimes it spells out something, even something that may have been self-understood. So here the Teireh is telling you how they used their report to fight against Moshe. And the next Pasuk is telling you how they used their report to fight against the Abish's plan. So it's not Mamish L'Chaira question. By adding these words here in this passage, by adding this in this passage, it, it leads to a mistake in the Pshat of the Pasik. You think that now the Pasik is telling you the reason for their death. When it's not, it's just coming to talk about the fact that they rebelled against Moshe Rabbeinu. It's only in the next passage that I want to talk about the cause of their death. It shouldn't have been mentioned at all over here. Keep it clear. The first Pasuk is only talking about the, the fact that they were fighting against Moshe. And the second Pasuk is talking about the negative report they gave against the Abishter. Against the Abishter's plan. So therefore Rashi immediately in the same Rashi Rashi adds immediately That yes, it's like a true. The word Diba is not necessarily negative. The word Diba just means training your words, expressing your words. It could be for the positive, it could be for the negative. True. In the first Pasuk, the Titus is being clear and it's omitting the word Ra'a, that it was a negative report, because it's talking, not talking here about the Aveda that they did against the Abishter. Ki'im Sipur Dvarim. The Titus here is just telling me the story of what happened. Eich Vayalinu Al-Yidei Dibrustam. How did they bring the Yidin to, to rebel, to, to fight with Moshe Rabbeinu? Through words, through speaking, through, through uh, giving the report and rallying the Yidin. So therefore the Taitataka omits the word Ra for a reason and the word Diba itself is not necessarily negative. To say it in different words, the Taita specifically is being precise in writing only the word Diba. And the word Diba could theoretically be positive also. Because in the content of this Pasik, if they were fighting against Moshe, even if they were doing it through some positive words that they spoke, but it was something that was against Moshe, that was not what Moshe Rabbeinu wanted. So even if they were speaking positive words, but it was against Moshe, that would be an issue. That would also explain why Moshe Rabbeinu's davening would not help for them. So here the Pasuk is saying is, they were talking, they were reporting, they were speaking to the Yidin, and it was a complaint against Moshe. We're not focusing now on the negative aspect of the report, that they didn't want to enter into Eretz Yisrael. That's not what this Pasuk is speaking about. And so just the fact that they're speaking against Moshe, that's enough to explain this Pasuk. That's what this Pasuk is clarifying. As we explained, that once they're fighting against Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu's tefillah cannot work for them. So therefore, Rashi has to explain this right away. This is part of the clarification. When Rashi talks about Diba, it's not Rashi explaining another word, Diba. It's part of Rashi's pshat in clarifying the two psukim. What is the first pasuk that on this Indian talking about and what is the second pasuk in this Indian talking about? Or maybe Rashi rails it, and then Rashi brings a raya for this. Therefore, in the next pasuk, it does say that it was a negative report. From the fact that in the next pasuk, it does clearly say that it was a negative report. And over there, the Taita Taka is telling you 
the cause for their death. Therefore, the Torah has to write the word Ra that the cause of their death was the negativity, the negativity of the report. That's in the next Pasik. So Harim is Zerayish, because of Zesh and Kos of Ra, that in this Pasik, where it does not say Ra, Aim Zem Ashmoz Shala Oven Sha'asu. There is nothing in the Pasik where it's mentioning the actual sin of the bad report. We'll move on, Shayn Kavanas, Allah Haggad Sivas Misasam, and it's understood because over here we're not coming to say the cause of their death. Kim Lamala Ila Tfilas Mesha. Just to say why Mesha Rabbeinu's Tfilah was ineffective for them. So now when Rashi repeats and mentions in the end again, that there is a diba, there, the word diba could also be for the positive. What is Rashi referring to here? Rashi is actually writing this. This is what the Pasuk Aleph, the first Pasuk means when it says diba. The title in the first Pasuk is, is, is dafkin not emphasizing the nature of the speech and the gam im even if it would have been positive how you move on it would have been understood why Moshe Rabbeinu's tefillah didn't help as the Rebbe explained before as long as it was against Moshe even if it was positive speech but it was against Moshe Rabbeinu it wouldn't Moshe Rabbeinu's tefillah wouldn't have worked for them so that's the pshat of the two different psukim over here. The first pasuk is talking about why Moshe Rabbeinu's filler wasn't effective. The second pasuk is talking about the cause of their death. And the flow of the words of Rashi is mamish beautiful. The lesson in Aveda Hashem that comes out from this. It says in Tikkun Ezoyar, There's the extension of Moshe Rabbeinu in every generation. Another expression that it already says in the, in the Medrash, that there is no generation that does not have somebody like Moshe in it. We'll move on, and therefore it's understood. Just as it was then that Moshe Rabbeinu did daven for all Yidin. And he worried for all the Eden. We even see all the way in the beginning that the Abishter tested Moshe Rabbeinu with this when he was a shepherd for the sheep to see how he handles and deals with his sheep. This is where you see the real leader that's concerned about his people. The same is true with the extension of Moshe Rabbeinu in every generation. That they are concerned and they are davening for the well being of every single one of the Yidden in their generation. Although there are those that on their own could daven a complete a high level of davening and accomplish with their davening. Every individual has a mitzvah saseh to daven for his own needs for himself. Even they need the tefillah of Moshe Rabbeinu Shebedeiram in their generation. And the reason for this is as follows. Person will say, I'm davening for myself. I have the mitzvah and I daven, and if, if, if there's a mitzvah and I daven, they is certainly going to answer me. Why do I need to rely on the tefillah of the Moshe of the generation? So the Rebbe says, No, the reason is as follows. As the Alter Rebbe says in Tanya, the Moshe of the generation is the head and the brain of the body of all the Eden of that generation. So that this, from this marshal we understand, just as it is physically, when there's any lack or any pain in one of the limbs of the body, where is this pain felt? The pain is felt in the brain, in the head, more than in any other part of the body. The same is also true spiritually. The tefillah for all of Klal Yisrael, for all of its limbs, for each individual. That is through the main tefillah, the most powerful tefillah is by the brain, by the head. Over there is where the condition and the pain of Yidin is felt the most intensely. And that tefillah of the Meisha Shebedeir is the most powerful. And another point, even if it's true that a person dabbles on his own and his tefillah has a great koyach, but his tefillah also gets elevated through the tefillah of the Meish of the generation. Meish Rabbeinu being the intermediary that connects 
not separates Chas V'Shalom, but connects Yidin to the Eivishter, or K'may Shenemer, as it says clearly in the Pasuk, and Neichi Oymid Ben Avayu Ben Nechem, I, Moshe Rabbeinu, stands between the Yidin and the Eivishter. So therefore, all the Tfilas of Klal Yisrael go through Moshe, and every single Yid, without exception, has to rely on the Tfila of the Moshe of the generation. We could learn this here from Meishar Rabbeinu's conduct. The Yidin went off from the straight path to the point that the Eibishter wanted to bring a plague upon them. And since they were a generation of, of knowledge, they were a generation that was on a very high level, they have a relation to the level of Moshe Rabbeinu, they were his generation. Certainly they were on a high level in their Avedis Hashem, including in their ability to daven. So, and so when they realized their mistake, they must have been davening and begging Hashem to save them. It's only Moshe Rabbeinu through his davening. He brought about, Not only did they not die immediately, They all lived out their life to 60 years old. There were those of them that lived up to more, uh, close to 40 years longer. After the Chet because those of the age 20 and above continued living, so those that were about 20 years old continued living for about another 40 years. And those people that continue living there in the Midbar through the Tefillah of Moshe did not live a life of suffering. Kim Chaim Toivim, a good life. Begashmias, Beruchnias, materially, spiritually. Shalabi Meshach Kol Hashanim. All those years that they daven, that they lived, that is. Hoyelam Lech Men Hashemayim. They had the Mon Umayim Beirish of Miriam, the water of Beir of Miriam. Vanania Kovet Cholchi Moim, and the Nania Kovet that traveled with them, Larigus and the Choshen Vakravim to to kill the snakes and the scorpions, all the guys big dayim, and to uh, iron their clothing. The Gam and physically, spiritually, that is. They had a very good life there. He didn't want a very high level in those years in the Midbar. So this is what Moshe Rabbeinu brought about through his tefillah. He gave them life, he gave them good life. Same is also true regarding the Moshe of every generation. He is the one that's concerned and davens for every yid who am espalal and he davens upoyal al yidet filosai and he's effective through his tefillah. Hamshoch has kol tov begashmi sebruchnis, bringing for every single one of the yidin only good both megashmis and beruchnis. So as a postscript to this sicha. When the Sikha was prepared for print, um, what happened was, in the Sikha itself, the Rebbe talks about the fact that Moshe Rabbeinu's filler for the Meraglim was ineffective because they were fighting Moshe Rabbeinu himself. So they prepared and explained, and the Rebbe actually in the Fabrengen explained it this way, that the same thing is also regarding uh, the Moshe of every generation. When, when the Rebbe davens for people and it's effective, but it's not effective for somebody that's fighting Moshe Rabbeinu himself. And the Rebbe said to omit this part of the Sikha, the Rebbe crossed out the whole thing, and the Rebbe wrote a very sharp answer that he sort of on the yard, he should erase, he, sorry, that is, he should burn the, 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 the paper that bears such a uh, concept on it, and uh, it's the opposite of, of uh, the understanding of Pichsidus of what a Rebbe is. A Rebbe is definitely davening for all the Kla Yisrael, for everybody, including those that oppose him, and the Rebbe will daven, he'll be effective for everybody. So, even though in the Sikha regarding the Meraglim, the Rebbe explains differently, but when you get to the Moshe Shebedoi, the Rebbe said clearly that it's Hepech Siddusha Uplake, that the Rebbe definitely davens and is concerned and is pile for every single Yid in Klal Yisrael.